Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. Uh, we're here, Zen, and uh, I'm, I'm tired. How are you doing? I'm also tired. Yeah, it's it's been it's a lame, so. it's been a hell of a fucking week, dude. It's that's the best way I can put it. Avengers Endgame has finally uh, allowed other people into theaters, so my work has gotten ten times way more busy. Ah, that's a shame. Yeah, because every studio that was like, well, there's no real th- theater available for us to screen something unless you had your own lot, is now going like, the theaters are open, everyone go see these movies now. And it's like, oh, fuck. Everyone just fucking bum rush the theater. Everyone bum rush the theater before... Uh, well, thankfully, Detective Pikachu isn't that greedy. Detective Pikachu's like, we have some screens, but we're also sharing it with Endgame, so we know. We know the score. Uh, but it's busy, and it's going to be only busier, as people have noticed, because at, at a certain point I was like, oh, two uploads Saturdays and Sundays, and then now I'm like, well, let's let's uh, let's wait. <laughs> let's wait a bit to see how this child dies down first. But either way, we're here, and we're going to talk about uh, Dokkan now with To Be Released. Uh, let's just be super up upfront and honest about this one. Uh, to be released, I would say, is graded on a scale of how good is this episode is dependent on how much do I care about the units we're putting on the scale. Uh, <laughs> these next two units, I'm going to be honest with you, everyone. I'm just going to say this out front. They are very good units. Don't let our words say anything else about it. They, I could literally not, I forgot these fucking guys even got released to show you how much <laughs> I care about them. I could literally give zero shits about them about their release about anything yeah so kind of know that going in and i'm not here to start like a whole debate about whether they're good or not they're good i'm not gonna be stupid a good unit is good but just know that my general caring for them is not at a point of like it's not kid goku levels we're not at hype levels right now just to show you so i want everyone to realize that going in so let's talk about uh, the two dudes up, going up the brother dudes, the two uh, uh, boys, actual brother boys. Let's start with the single boy, uh, Super Saiyan Gohan, who for previous is also a, a, just a regular ass Gohan when you pull him. Uh, his uh, leader skill is called Strike for Destiny, which also these came out in Global First, so we actually get to know what the hell they say. So his uh oh, the actual lines. Yeah. Oh god, the voice lines are so bad though. Yes, they are. We'll get to them soon, but I just want to mention that the uh essay quote for when Gohan uses his uh, s- uh special attack is I gain considerate power as well. So he's just kind of bragging about his power, <laughs> about what he can do. Uh his leader skill is 120% to movie heroes. His uh passive skill is uh two key and attack and defense 40 percent for all movie hero category allies and if you're fighting a movie boss's team he gets attack and defense 100 percent up and also he disables rampage and his categories are hybrid saiyan majin buu saga is rampage just that one broly mechanic that yes it, it, <laughs> yes yes it is uh, i'll also say right now that the other boy on this scale also disables rampage but we'll talk about that soon. Uh, his categories are, again, uh, Hybrid Saiyan, Majin Buu Saga, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, and Sibling Bond. And uh, Sibling Bond is the new category that they added, which is, I'll say, a lame-as-fuck category just right off the bat. Uh, so, okay, so this Gohan is basically what I feel actual, like, movie heroes needed, which is a new uh, support unit that is not Pandel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, he's good. He is. There's no denying that he is good. He has a cool outfit. I like that outfit. He does. I do feel like they've... This, this specific Gohan looks exactly the same as that other Gohan that is also in uh, uh, Majin Buu Saga and is also a uh, support unit. I forget the name of him. It's it, but it's the one based on Great Saiyan Man, so it's not actually the same. But either way, he the, goes... the Saiyan Man with no um, boat, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe that's the one. But 
Either way, he's a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, I think. But this one's actually a Super Saiyan Gohan, so, you know, what do I? What the fuck do I know? Oh, wait, no, the last one isn't Saiyan Man. It's the same Gohan, but not Super Saiyan 2. Or not... He's a, he's a, he's one. Super Saiyan 2, not one. The old one is Super Saiyan 2, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Looks like exactly the same. But the the yeah they are basically the same but he is 100 percent also the good thing is that he is a uh he is a support unit that also occasionally can actually do damage but only when fighting a movie boss any other time he's just a regular old support unit and that's it so i don't know i think it's nice for a support unit to be kind of this way i also think it's uh we should mention this is neither a positive nor a negative but it's very stupid to disable uh rampage in this day and age <laughs> There's yeah, no. I, I I saw that earlier today. And is... I was like, uh, hmm. that. And then I looked it up, and then I remembered that you actually had to disable it when the original Dokkan Fest first one ever came out. So yeah, let's let's talk about some Dokkan history. Let's go back to the past, back when Broly event first came out, and uh, you can actually maybe you know what maybe I should pull up you know if I can find the old modcast of uh. uh uh, f- a footage of us talking about Broly back in the day. I'll put it up here. But the basic thing was is that back in the day, Broly to beat without Rampage was actually impossible. It just wasn't. You couldn't do enough damage to him just because his defense was so stupid high. And um, if you didn't have the Link skill or you didn't have any of the new family Kamehameha, Kamehameha trio, then you were basically fucked for that entire fight. There was just no beating Broly. And if you pulled for Broly and you got Broly, well, congratulations, you can't, Broly can't beat the Broly event, so what the hell are you gonna do? Yeah, I, so I actually like that original fight, like, when it first came out. Yeah. Because you actually, like, people were making up cool, like, strategies and shit, and they were like, oh, with, you know, Tech Whis and AGL Kid Boo, and you just kind of... And then your Super Saiyan God, and then Kaioken Super seven hundred and fifteen times to overcome that buff. Yeah. Um, shit on it too much, but there's really no need to put that mechanic on any modern card. No, there isn't. Well, the the thing I also say about uh, the old the old fight in particular, I feel like the uh, the Broly fight wasn't that bad. A lot of people felt that it was. Uh, um more favoring to the whales because literally the three new cards were used to beat him but then i would always right. say that like they did include a link skill that they gave to free to play characters not free to play characters but they gave to existing characters and, and some of them were srs I and think, rs i think a couple free to plays got it they just sucked yeah but the point is is that you could make a team uh, built Vegeta around i got it yeah there you go but you can make a team beating that uh broly with uh free to play dudes i think cell was way more of an asshole to actually fight because soul versus soul the link sucked ass which was give one key and then everyone can and then it stops cells regeneration it doesn't even stop him from fucking killing you he just stops the regeneration yeah, he doesn't heal. <laughs> and i thought that always sucked ass but um but yeah there's no really no reason for anyone to have rampage in this day and age because literally you never use it uh I guess it I guess if you were doing a video of like uh using the new only an all team of family Gokus that disable rampage to fight Broly, here's my video, and then your video is like two minutes long, and the first minute is you talking about your team, the next thirty seconds are you going through the map, and then ten seconds for the fight, <laughs> and then it's over. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's super. You know what I mean about these fucking characters? Who gives a shit about this? Who gives a shit about him? Yeah, and that's kind of uh, where we're gonna end it here for him because this really, there's nothing really else to talk about him other than I think he's a solid unit that has a stupid th- disable rampage, but also just kind of uh, whatever. So I'm gonna give him a uh, a three out of five, big boy. Uh, but two, but it's Gohan, so I'll give him a three. All right, I think that's fair. It's always nice when Gohan fans get thrown a bone. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often. Actually, it happens a lot. It's just never to their satisfactory. Yeah, well, okay. It happens a lot, and then they, they're mad about it. And then everyone's like, okay, well, I guess they're mad about it. So then... And then Gohan sucks again. And they're like, wait, no. I actually don't know what I want about Gohan. We're, we're mad about him being a fighter because he wants to be a scholar. But also, wait, don't make him a scholar because I want him to fight. Uh, just make him Superman, please. 
I'll also say this because uh, I knew this comment was coming when I made the video uh, on Twitter. I, I, I um, so you remember the end of the Bojack fight where Gohan turns into a straight up murderer and kills all of Bojack's crew and like violently destroys every single member of his team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took that scene and then replaced it with uh, the music from Akira because I felt it was very uh, fitting for this like borderline demonic music to be going around while he's killing him. And when I put it up, I no joke eventually got uh, the the comment I was waiting for, which was from a fan of Gohan who said, "Where was this Gohan during TBS Super?" <laughs> Where was horrific murder Gohan? Where was horrific murder Gohan? Where was <laughs> horrible murder Gohan to show up to Ribri and cut her in half like he fucking does in that movie? <laughs> Literally did cut them all in half and then he punched through bojack's chest hey fucking yeah then bojack tried to put a lady in front of him, the i forget her name they put it in front of her and yeah. did nothing gohan was already gonna kill her too so it's not like he was putting up a good shield <laughs> i think the best part too is that like if he intentionally out to murder them all because it was just so ca I mean I'm guessing he was but he just was completely serial killer deadpan straight face no no oh, it's no. seriously it tur he turns into uh Jason from uh Friday the 13th boy by the way he's just casually killing all these people especially because the whole movie played out and then Gohan went Super Saiyan 2, and then the entire crew is dead in, like, the next three minutes. Yeah, because the entire crew, Bojack's like, go fuck him up. And then the two go after him, and he cuts both of them in half. <laughs> it is maybe uh, the greatest display of just pure, unadulterated violence towards these poor pirate people who didn't see this coming. Uh, it's like... Uh... <laughs> And it's like not Gohan at all, which I guess was the point of Super Saiyan Two, sort of. Yeah, I, I, you know, this obviously isn't wasn't built this way, but I always saw it as like he learned his lesson from Cell, no talkie, only violent murdery. Yeah, he's like, mm, I remember the last time I went in this form. Uh, my last fuck up was that I talked. Let's not do that this time. Then he does it again against Boo. He does. He does do that. He did. He if only he had remembered his lesson from Bojack. Uh, but yeah, man, if only I would have loved Gohan so much more in Dragon Ball Super if when they went to go fight Goku Black, Gohan just went to the future and cut him back. <laughs> you know what would have been better if they actually uh, used their time travel machine to get Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, specifically <laughs> that version of Gohan, and then brought him against Goku Black? Oh my god, no. What they should have done was, you know how they have Goku distract uh, Zamasu while Vegeta is fighting Goku Black? Yes. Is they should have just fucking had Gohan cutting the immortal Zamasu in half over and over again. Every time he gets back up, Gohan just cuts him in half again. Oh my god, that'd be so good. And he goes like, how's Gohan doing? And then they would cut back to him constantly cutting him in half. Just every, yeah, every time it cuts back to Gohan. It's just him slicing Zamasu in half over and over again. And for the first time, they return blood to DB as a small splash of blood lands on his face <laughs> as you see uh, close up to his eyes of Zamasu in right terror. Right across his eyes. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. What I'm saying is a lot more situations would be solved if they just actually brought back Super Saiyan 2 Gohan from the Bojack movie and placed him in somewhere else. It's like, one moment, Deborah, we'll be right back. Oh, hello, little boy, you are- Oh! <laughs> Thank you once again, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, for saving the day with your relentless murder. Alright, put him back in the time machine. I would love it. Oh, boy. Uh, let's, let's go on to this other Gohan that is not the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan that I want. Actually, you know what? If they're going to release a uh, Dokkan Fest for Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, I want it to be that specific Bojack Gohan. Since they've already fucked up the LR against Cell. Yeah. I kind of like the Bojack Gohan more anyway. Just yeah. because I don't really care that much. I, I find the Cell fight, like, kind of uninteresting. Hmm. 
oh but imagine that special attack though where like <laughs> so every time he does the special attack it starts with two of bojack's members showing up <laughs> He slices them in half, and then whoever you're using puts up the female pirate as a blast. Throws the, the girl pirate in the way. Yeah, they always do that, so it always plays that exact same way. And then he kills him. Then he punches through his chest and then kills him. Oh, it'd be glorious. Get working on it, Dokkan. That one's a freebie. And then he can hey, have an act. He can have an active skill, and then his active skill has no dialogue. <laughs> It's just the quiet. That's it. It'd be the second best active skill voice line next to B Pam. God, they're really bad. They're really bad. And speaking of bad uh, voice lines, uh, the next person on the big boy scale is Super Saiyan Gohan Teen and Super Saiyan Gohan Kid. It's the new LR. And they're, the leader skill is the for the new leader for the new category is Sibling Bond which is key plus four uh, attack uh, 170% and then HP and defense 150. And then he also does Goku's family or Goku's family key plus three attack 170% and then HP and defense 130%. Um, and then his, I actually, I'll mention the super attack cause it's actually kind of worth mentoring, mentioning it. He greatly raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage to the enemy. And then he greatly raises attack. It, it, it's like both of them. That's the 12 key. This is the uh, 18 key. Greatly raises attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage to the enemy. And then his passive skill is attack and defense 58%. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. Key plus one attack and defense 10% for each attack performed. Key up to plus five attack and defense up to 100%. And then he disables rampage. And then his active skill is... Uh, the family Kamehameha, which massively raises attack temporarily and causes ultimate damage to enemy, can be activated when HP is 59% or less and facing only one enemy, starting from the third turn from the start of the battle once only. What kind of Yu-Gi-Oh card shit are you reading right now? Uh, let me tell you, at some point, uh, Dokkan cards became late-day uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. Yep, and then finally his category are uh, Hybrid Saiyans, Majin Buu Saga, Full Power, Joined Forces, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, and Sibling Bon. So, before we get into anything, I do want to mention that uh, Sibling Bond, I think, is an extremely stupid category. Yeah, so uh, well, while we're on the topic of that, I looked up Sibling Bond because I was like, who the fuck is going to be in this other than 17 and 18? And them, man, it has some real winners in here. Yes. So uh, Master Shen and Tao Pai Pai? Yep. So uh, here's Wara, the fun. isn't it? He is because who he is, is even his sibling. It is Mira. He is the brother of Mira. Robot Toa, 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 my bad, Oh, Toa. really? Yeah, he's the brother of Toa. Okay, and then you have Whis is in it, but I don't think there's a Vados in Global yet. But, but yeah, so there's, Whis is in it because but because there's no Vados, but Vados is in Japan, which is why he's in the category. And then Great Saiyan Man still in it, so I guess he's sometimes Gohan. Sometimes But Gohan. not when the links matter. Yep. Uh, and then we have Bra and only GT Trunks. Only GT Trunks is in this. Perfect. Super Trunks. Uh, there was one other really good one. It's Vegeta, but only post okay. Dragon Ball Super Vegeta. So Vegeta is in it. I don't see Tarbol in here. It, it, Tarbol is in it. He's super well hidden because there's only oh, one there Tarbol and he looks exactly like Vegeta. There he is. There's two Tarbol, by the by. Oh. Oh, is there? My bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's Tapion and his shitty little brother from the Tape Tapion movie. Yep, they're in it. Okay, the real hero of this category is the two Turles minions that look like little tiny ball sacks. Oh, are they in it? They did make they're it. In it. <laughs> they made it in. So, category. here's my number one problem with this category. The sibling bond, they have to be... They have established that they have to be on, I guess, speaking terms. That's why Goku and Raditz cards are not in included in it. 
Oh yeah, they have to. But are are Deborah and what's her name on on friendly terms? They are apparently enough for them, considering that they're demons. The thing that I'll take umbrage with is the fact that Beerus and his brother Champa are on it when they have been antagonistic to each other. That's their entire bond. Yeah, but there is that little scene when Champa dies in the Tournament of Power, and Beerus is like, "Say something." Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's true. Maybe it's uh maybe yeah. there's deeper maybe they'll look into it when Dragon Ball there's Super. There's a lot returns. in there to unpack, yeah. All right, that's fair. But really, the the main thing of it is is that they have to be, um, in speaking terms, and that's why I think Vegeta does not belong on this fucking category because he never he doesn't he's not on speaking terms with his brother. Yeah, I didn't think he even knew if Tarwell was still alive. I believe when they were going to make Super Saiyan God and then Goku said, wait, you have a brother who's really good. Vegeta, why don't you call him up? And he says, I never got his number. And then Goku's like, what do you mean? You never got your brother's number. (laughs) Well, I think it's just they're not they're not like friends, but they're not antagonistic. Like, I don't think Vegeta hates his brother. No, he's like not on speaking terms. They're just not like friendly. He's very, again, he is extremely accepting of his wife, which I think is a very big move of Vegeta. When previous Vegeta, old Prince Vegeta would go, huh, someone of not a Saiyan pride, <laughs> whereas your Saiyan pride led you. Whereas yeah, now he, this little onion woman that you're marrying. But now modern day Vegeta's like, I support uh, your marriage, brother. I'm so proud of you to be taking Saiyans in such a new direction. <laughs> I never thought possible. And half onion. Exactly. I support your onion union. <laughs> I hope you make beautiful <laughs> onion children. <laughs> and bring back the Saiyan name. Um, but yeah, I just don't like this category at all because I don't. I feel it's really weirdly slapdash together. And also think that the only support on it is uh, Bulla. <laughs> uh, well, the new Gohan, right? Oh, yeah, but it's only movie heroes. Oh, that's what the fuck? Yeah, that's uh, it's only movie heroes. He only buffs movie heroes. That's why I was saying is that he's very specific. Uh, the good, but the good thing is, is that at least this LR, who is the only leader for this um category, can pull into the Goku family, uh, to uh get better supports. I guess is the nice way of saying it. This category is like the number one testament to what I keep saying is that Dokkan needs to stop shoveling out bullshit categories. They do, and just. Every time they release a new LR, it doesn't have to be a new category. Yeah. It can just be another leader for an old one. So you have more options. Yeah. Like and the most bullshit, stupid category I've ever seen in my life. And the problem is, is a lot of them just feel like they're not built with the idea of this isn't going to be a category. So you don't get any support for them until banners later. Like how many, yeah, how it, many. It definitely feels like they just made it up and then they were like, fuck it. Who, who is siblings in the Dragon Ball world? Like, how many categories are supported... One Master Shen card, perfect. Perfect. How many categories are carried by the fact that um, you can say, oh man, Agility Turles can fit on this team, and he can support it? <laughs> That's true. It's like, just come on. You can, you can do better for it. And I'll also say the so one I like good... that. Um, I like that the, the nice version of Android 17 and 18 are on this, and so are the evil murderer future versions. I mean, they're pretty. They're they're pretty. You can't deny their sibling bond. I feel like that's the they're, one. They are pretty tight. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super nice. I will also say that I think the other funny thing about this uh, card, which is again, it came to global first, is the fact that they have effectively eaten Super Saiyan 4 Goku's lunch. They have the exact same leader skill as Super Saiyan 4 Goku in terms of Goku's family. Oh, uh, the only thing is that Goku, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, uh, give his ore is for just super class, I believe. So you can use other people in it. But I think it's kind of funny that uh, Global introduced uh, the the first uh, LR for Goku's family before the actual first uh, supporter for Goku's family came out. Uh, but other than that, I, uh, this, oh, that, uh, man, this active skill. So th- the active skill is something where I'm not in the same frame of mind of a lot of people where it says 59% is too low. I think you dip below 59% if for most teams. Let me just say at my level, it's pretty easy, but I'm also not a crazy fucking dumbass whale. No offense to any dumbass whale friends that I have out there. <laughs> 
because again you can whale whatever you want but again i'm not that kind of player so i always dip below 59 percent uh probably around the the end of the fight and it's not too big a deal like except for when i'm using uh villains because that they never dip below uh 80 percent at all um but the one thing i'll say is that this active skill is way too like you have to be below 59 percent three turns have to pass and then only fight one dude And that's just not, that's just too many things put together. I think the only thing that I could probably see this actually activating in is, is in that new super crazy Goku event. If you're like having one of these like crazy ass teams. Yeah, I can see that. That event's pretty, pretty ridiculous. It is. It is very ridiculous. Um, and all other than that, like I just can't, I think that the family Kamehameha is a cool thing. I just don't think it's this cool. I don't think it's LR worthy is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so the family Kamehameha to me, but like, hey, remember the father-son Kamehameha? That was cool. And now there's another kid. Yes. Oh, yeah. It, it definitely does not scream um, to me. No, it doesn't. It really though the coolest but then thing. Then again, like almost none of the LRs really do. So I guess that's not a fair criticism. It's not a fair criticism, but I guess it's just to me. Like I feel like a lot of uh, other weird ass LRs are at least like. <sighs> I don't know what why why it's specifically this one. I think now that you mention it, there are a lot of like LRs that I feel aren't worthy of the LR name, and yet they are LRs. But I feel specifically like. This one is just a whole nother level of just like, I can't believe that they made this an LR. So here, here's sort of my thinking with, with LRs in general. So there's yeah. two kinds of LR, like, for me. Yeah. There's an LR that is about the character, mm -hmm. about the moment. Yes. So Bardock up against Frieza, that's like a big famous moment. Like, Bardock himself, who fucking cares? Yes. When he's staring down Frieza, big cool thing. That's a, that's about the moment. Yeah. Then you have someone like Tien and Chaozu, which is definitely just like, hey, here's Tien and Chaozu. Like it's not it's not like Tien getting killed by Nappa is the LR, right? It's yeah, just them. which it's which I feel would have been a better LR if the LR was an <laughs> AOE where Chaozu died. <laughs> So, uh blows himself up and then Tien does the tri beam. No, yeah, the the enemy cuts off Tien's hand and then shouts who blows <laughs> up the enemy. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Uh yeah, and it's just like the family Kamehameha is not like it's, oh, it's LR Gohan and Goten. They think it's LR family Kamehameha because it's just to highlight the moment. Yeah. And that moment, you no know, who gives a shit about it? Yeah, I just it's not one of my moments. It's not even one of the moments from like the cooler moments from the from the movies, I guess. I even think that the Krillin one is as good as this one is to show you how I feel. I think it would have been funnier if they had made an LR uh another LR trunks and <laughs> kid go go ten <laughs> and it was Krillin in the background. And also Krillin. Yeah, and then also Krillin. I think it would have so, been a good trio. Uh, socks at? Hmm is these fucking cards is this is the second one now that they made the lr have like the kamehameha tint oh, and yes. it just looks awful it does look awful i remember looking at um trying to look at the background because i just wanted the ghost goku for my own purposes and it's impossible because the entire shit is just blue so it looks terrible it does look as lr gohan who literally looks like a statue just a lot of stone but it's still really bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is a, uh, this is them. The one thing I will say is a good on them for not fucking over uh, this unit by including Goku. Because if they had included Goku, then they would never have been able to fit onto Hybrid Saiyans. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Goku so, is just their active skill, so they get a pass. Exactly. So yeah, here's this is the this is the unit. How you feel about them? Uh, I will also say I got a five, I guess. Yeah. The the other thing that's kind of bothering me is that they're not the exact same, and I realize this, so don't come at me saying like, "Oh man, you're saying they're the same." They're not the exact same. I will say I do feel like the passive scale is a lazy re retread of the LR Kale and Khalifa, except for not as good. 
I can see that. I, I just feel like it's too soon. Too like it's LR, like... Kale, and Khalifa more. Yeah. Well, they, they just do more, but I also feel like this is the exact same passive they got. Except for theirs was around Universe 6, and this one was around Goku Day. So it's like... Oh, yeah, you're right. That's where, I, that's where I'm saying. It's like, I feel like they could have, I don't know, done a little bit more. But, you know, it, it's whatever. I'm going to say two out of five for me. I just literally... Actually, I'm going to go less because I literally forgot this guy got released. So I'm going to say a one out of five. <laughs> and then combined, that's a two out of five. All right, that's fair. Now, if I were able yeah, to get them I'm somehow... Kind of about that guy. Yeah. And again, these are this is a very good unit. And if I pull him, I will gladly use him. But... I'm not actually going to be actively going for it. But I suggest everyone in, J in Japan go for this unit because I want to get uh, free stones. <laughs> yes, please. I need to, I'm need. i going to go for that guy in Japan whenever he comes out. Mm -hmm. There you go. You're part of the Probably solution. Get him. Yeah, I'm not going to like actively go crazy trying to get him or anything, but I want to have stones when he comes out so that I can get him because I play only characters that have multiple characters on their card uh join forces so yeah fantastic i mean they're a good join voices guy too i think all right then that's uh that's the two dudes on the big boy scale go gohan gets a three out of five big boy and then goten and goten and trunks get a, a two out of five big boy or, and then goten i and gohan <laughs> yeah goten and gohan i'm sorry again i'm forgetting left and right i'll also say that their first form uh, art when they're an ssr is funny because it looks like the big bunny and little bunny yeah, it does it looks exactly like that yeah which is why i posted that up on twitter i was like oh no. man that's really funny exactly the same <laughs> It's hilarious, especially because Gohan just looks stupid buff in that form with his muscles. Yeah, he does. And then Goten is just tiny, and he's standing next to him like, yeah, yeah. get him. <laughs> get him, Gohan. Fuck him up. Get him, Gohan. Kick his ass. Then he goes Super Saiyan 2 and cuts everyone in half. <laughs> it's like, that's the old Gohan I remember. So like, you weren't born during then. I was inside, Mom. <laughs> I was watching through Mom. I was in the woo. Close up shot to the old days back then. Close up shot on Chi Chi watching. He's like, I was there. Right there. He points at it. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, okay, let's go into some I questions. I was right. <laughs> let's go into some questions uh, <laughs> before we go into a very dangerous territory for two dudes. <laughs> Uh, all right. So again, if you want to ask a question, leave a comment uh, down below in the YouTube channel or, in our, or when I ask for questions on um, Twitter. We don't got a lot of questions, but we'll answer what we got. First question comes in from YouTube and it's from Aro Kruby. Excuse me if I don't say your name right. He says, I'm curious with JP Dokkan being broken for as long as it has, what could they possibly do as compensation? We've never had the game quite as unbalanced before in Dokkan history. Uh, I will say that uh, in terms of brokenness, I want to say one of the year anniversaries, the game was literally unplayable. Do you remember? I do not remember, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, there, there, there was a time where Dokkan was literally unplayable for a couple of days. And here's the shocker about it. When they did give us stone competition, I want to say it wasn't like more than 10 stones. So yeah, I, I don't think there's I, I people have been building it up on Twitter for a while. I don't think anything is like coming. I don't think anything big like is coming. right in and be like, no. ha ha, here's your 400 stones. If anything, <laughs> with with the Goku banner that they just released, that's a permanent. They could just give us a buttload of tickets and that's it. Which yeah, is, I am kind of worried about like it being permanent. That, yeah, that that's going to start seeding free like reward stones and stuff as they're going to start doing tickets instead for fucking gokus yeah that's kind of what happens during like anniversaries the second there's like a ticket banner they always go here's 30 stones and like 50 tickets and i'm always like i wish i had more stones but i guess here's the ticket banner though it will try for this stupid lr but now that the goku thing is a thing they could always go here's compensation through tickets which i think is something that um until it happens is not a fear, but the second it happens, it's going to be like, oh, well, this is unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's going to be like a this is where we are now yeah. kind of thing. Goku Goku every day is real, and it's been a permanent feature to Dokkan. 
Uh, but yeah, thank again. Th- thank you for the question. But we really don't. I don't. I don't. I don't expect the compensation. If anything, I don't expect more than like maybe. Uh, the worst case scenario: five stones and then thirty tickets. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I just I don't think they're gonna take into account how long it's been broken. I don't yeah. think they're gonna be like, oh man, it's been broken for so long. We got to give them a bunch of stuff. I no. maybe thirty if they're feeling really generous. Yeah, if they're feeling generous and whatever the who knows. But I'll tell you, we will know when it happens because that's when we know the bet will finally be over between Sahal, Josh, and the other guy because they're also yeah. still waiting for the final details on the stones. So they're can, really trying to duck uh, paying that bet. They are, but let's see if it actually happens. <laughs> we have to wait for Dokon to actually do something first. <laughs> All right, then. Now let's go on to the Twitter questions. Um, first Twitter question comes in from Krabby. And he asks, can you get some people on the show that like Vegeta? And are active skills generally a better mechanic, in your opinion, than transforming units? And I'll say that, uh, that we do have people that like Vegeta. They're just never available. <laughs> yeah. Like Cornell and also, Penta. Also, I don't want to hear him talk about Vegeta, so... Yeah, it's true. Do you really want to hear uh, Penta talk more about Vegeta in front of you? No, you don't. He needs that. If you want to hear that, listen to old Modcast where he talks about Vegeta <laughs> and then we insult him. <laughs> that is the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, we also do the same thing to Cornell, but we don't do go as our hard on Cornell because he's a, he's a dad. <laughs> So I feel yeah. like there's a certain level <laughs> I feel of just like, like life is going hard enough when you're a dad that you don't need more from everybody else. Exactly. And in terms of active skills versus transforming units, um I don't know. I feel about the same for them for me personally. The only bummer uh, I think active skills are just handled better usually. Like yeah, I don't think there's one that's inherently like oh, this is a great mechanic because they're both kind of like eh. yeah. Yeah. active skills tend to be more implemented i don't know if that makes sense but no i think it does or just as stupid when someone makes them yeah i think that's generally how i feel about it the same way as well uh thank you for the question we'll get a little bit more into transforming units i guess in this next question because they ask this one comes from lodestar and says have you played the new mode released on jp dokkan called goku's legendary battle and if so do you think it's good attempt at making or a bad attempt at making Dokkan more difficult? Also, what's your favorite card art in Dokkan? Um, I'll say I have not played it yet, but I also feel like it's because I don't. So the way that the event is structured, I think it's specifically taking advantage of cards that never stop gaining buffs from using their special attack or transforming units. And it's just something that I have to actually think about before I actually go in and do something about it. Uh, so I can't really attempt it yet. In terms of good or bad, I will say the one thing about it is that I like that it's a, so far a difficulty that seems to be leaning towards units that you don't really see that often, like um, the Rose for it's the, the Int Goku Black that takes like five turns to fucking transform and then only if you're above 80% <laughs> HP. Fucking do anything, yeah. Yeah. This is the one mode where he, like you'll actually get to see him transform, and then he'll stay transformed, which is good, which is important, actually. So I think it's an interesting attempt. Uh, it's an interesting first attempt. In terms of difficulty, I still feel that Dokkan getting more difficult isn't the actual thing I want out of Dokkan, because <laughs> I don't find hard Dokkan to be satisfying, if that makes sense. So I, I'm kind of in the same boat where I, I think Dokkan is sort of in a catch-22 because there's just nothing to it. It's just super fluff. Yeah. That, like, people are like, it's too easy. I can just autopilot through it. But then, like, when you're playing hard Dokkan, you're like, man, I could be playing anything other than this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think – I think that it, it's better to trend easier than harder. But I, I don't think that Dokkan goes about difficulty the right way. Because I think when Dokkan goes about difficulty, they tend to just crank the numbers. Yes. Make which it is... really hard by making them take no damage and do a shit ton of damage. Which is Whereas also... like back before when they did Broly and stuff like that, where you had like he had a mechanic that you had to work around, I think that that was better. Yeah. And they have downgraded their their ability to implement difficulty since then. Yeah, and a lot of that also came down to the fact that eventually people realized that they had created cards like General Blue and just stun units that could 
like turtles that could just stun the boss for an indefinite amount of time and that's why eventually you got bosses that had immunity to all that stuff like they were immune from their ult being locked right, so you couldn't so you couldn't cheese them yeah but then it just came down to a stat check again Yes, and now you got this final form Goku where he can not only cheese stop all that, he also dodges your moves. So it's like, but then there's no real way to counter him being able, which is something I think is bullshit, that I think there should be a way for you to be able to counter the enemy dodge if they're going to go, if they're going to give more enemies dodge, if they're going to make more events that are actually hard and have a dodge. I don't like the idea of having... Something that's already RNG on my side, like for my attack to fail just simply because the AI, AI decided that my attack should fail. Yeah, the AI got a good roll, so your yeah. attack just fails that which one is, time. Yeah, which is what Harutagarn has, which is the flute. So if you want to stop Harutagarn shit, you just play the flute. But Goku doesn't have anything like that. He just dodges. And Janemba's the same way, except for Janemba, he dies super easy. So it's like, well, when you hit him, eventually he's just going to die. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Right. But the Goku is specifically just like occasionally your none of your attacks will work. Um, but again, I feel like at least I'll give the one credit to this mode is that I feel like it's at least prioritizing different units. Like it no longer like you actually have to think about like, well, this unit, like some units like um, like we were talking about tech uh, Vegito Blue, uh, who takes a very long time to ramp up. This is actually one of those events where you actually want that ramp up and he actually becomes as strong as he does. And it's helpful. So I think it's like a kind of a good direction, but also it's not the direction I would want to personally have. But I also can't like really, say, I can't like say like the direction I want is the direction it should go in. You know what I mean? I think it's it's better uh, than it was, but not necessarily the best it could be. Yes, I think that's fair. Good, everybody's happy way to put it. Uh, this also did not cause me to have the same level of just irate hatred that uh, Super Battle Road. Like, I just don't like Super Battle Road at all. I feel like this is maybe a little bit better, in my personal opinion, in terms of... Yeah, how yeah I would I would agree. Yeah. Super Battle Road's really annoying. Yes, it's just super fucking annoying. I, I just don't like it. Uh, also, what's uh, your favorite card art in Dokkan? Um, it's LR, Go Kid Goku, and Aureli for me. And if it's not that, then it's um, it's Kid Goku. <laughs> Mine changes every single time someone asks this question because yes. I do not have a strong enough opinion on the card art in Dokkan, so I always have to pick one out when they ask. So hang on, let me pull my list up and pick one out. Good, fair enough. Also say a really holding a poop stick is very good. I like that art. Uh, shout out to Legends Khalifa for being very big. That was not part of the it's question. Big. Very mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully you get her in your EX guaranteed pulls. It's a She's a large lass. Exactly. Um, On the Ribriant scale of large. <laughs> I like... Uh, our Goku and Frieza right now. Mm, okay. That's I'm, a good I'm one. I'm feeling that moment where they... Yeah, that's a good moment. Yeah. He's a it's pretty cool-ass unit. All right. Thank you, for, thank you. Thank you for the questions. And then we'll go on to uh, Nighthawk who has the last of our questions, so get ready. I'll start with this one, because um, he made two posts later on. So this is the one time we'll allow it, just because we don't have many questions, because I asked this super late at night. <laughs> he says, what are your favorite cards to use when, for, when you first started using the game? Also, when did you start playing? Thank you, as always, for answering my questions. Uh, favorite cards when you first started playing? God, uh, probably it would be, for me, the... Um, it's Gohan. So I started playing uh, Dokkan when Global got released, at the Global release. And then, uh, as I've said before, I saved up stones and then did two singles on the uh, Piccolo and Gohan banner. And I thought I got the units super easy. So I thought that the rates were super good. <laughs> Tricked yourself. Yeah. And then I wasted all my stones on Frieza and Ginyu Force and did not get any Frieza. <laughs> so that's when I knew that, oh, I guess I was wrong. But yeah, that as turns as a starting card, that was one of my favorites. Is that uh, original uh, Int Gohan that everyone hates now because he looks exactly like the LR. Yeah, kind of does. Yeah. What about you, Zen? Can you remember that? Uh, I really like the. I started at the same time, like right when Global came out. I really liked the uh, STR Super Saiyan Goku that you can't even pull anymore. Oh yeah, the yeah. That they just took out of the game, and then also the Tech Frieza that is that he was with. Or not that he was with, but that came out like after him, 
and I think is also no longer pullable. Oh yeah, the one that uh, Dokkan's into an SSR. The shit Golden Frieza, yeah. Yeah. Um, a shame too, because I always felt like he could have actually gotten in a legit tour, but then they fuck they fucked up his Dokkan by making him Golden Frieza, and he gets worse as Golden Frieza. Yep, <laughs> he's fucking terrible. Yeah. And uh, okay, and um, this other question, which is going to be into something, so. <sighs> all right also i just got off of reddit this is again nighthawk i also got off the reddit so sorry for any additional questions but what do you think about the D- the truth saying lr kale and khalifa being better than all other units in the game at free dupe level compared to lolagami's calculations uh and i'll just say right out from the front that i know i know truth and i know lolagami and i think this entire situation has gone <laughs> fucking out of control but also i don't know the proper thing to say in this situation other than i think that what did i don't understand how truth statement of just like he just thought that they were better has caused such a big drama when this is dokkan when stuff like that really shouldn't matter but i don't know yeah i how how tactful do you want me to be (laughs) that's the thing is i don't really want to again i don't want to start any real shit around here i just want to say like this entire thing has been Again, if people want to play the game they want to play, that's fine. And I don't understand. Like, Lolagami wants to play with his calculations. The truth wants to play with what he feels is best. And I feel like that's both fine. And then I feel like, for some reason, I don't understand why this clash happened. This clash shouldn't have happened, is in my mind. Which I don't understand why any of this started at all. So, that's why I'm kind of being like, I don't... I don't know. Be as tactful as possible. Say what you want to say, but also, I'm not trying to start any shit here. So, back to when I was there and part of it, uh, more or less based some degree of its identity around shitting on various YouTubers at various times. Uh, it feels like there, there's always there has to be some sort of target when you go to that place. It's true, even when we no were matter there. what it is there back from and even when we participated with you know when back when we were feuding with ichigo or whatever and then ichigo was the bad guy and then that passed and then re the vendors they're evil and they're they're gonna destroy the game and then that passed and then the bad guy became renzi and the laughing man for playing a mean old stinky prank on us and they were now the villains and now it's truth and i think the fact of the matter is dokkan is just the most bare bones zoo animal could play this just as good as we can so there's nothing to fucking talk about yeah that's true to talk about so if you don't have something to do then you're just gonna do this shit you're just gonna be like oh well there's nothing to fucking talk about and this guy talked about something so now that there's anything going on like truth said he likes kale and khalifa better which is not it's it's the least important thing any human has ever said about anything and i'll also say i've anything also in the world. i've also made statements with units that aren't as good and i don't get any shit for it at all like i've i think i'll still say gladly to anyone's face that i think physical Aurelia is one of the best units in the entire game there's nothing you can say that could sway me on it but because physical Aureli isn't on anyone's mind they don't care well, you're also not a high-profile enough target. No, I'm not a high-profile enough target. Let, let me put it that way. I'm not on the same level as Truth, but maybe if I got to Truth's level and I just kept saying it, eventually they would go against me too. But I just don't. Maybe. Well, you know, they have their million and a half excuses as to why. Like, oh, well, he's he's misleading people. And it's like, dude, who f- fucking cares? And yet yeah, also the easiest, babyest video game that has ever been crafted since Elmo's Letter Adventure on the PlayStation 1. Nothing that he says is going to have any impact on any of these poor players you pretend you're defending. You just want to have someone to fight against, so you're making up excuses to have a fight. Yeah, I really don't feel like there's a good way. The only thing, the, the thing I would say is actually misleading is things that are pertaining to rates and stuff like that. That stuff is like... If it's actual things in the game that are misleading information, I think that's like if you're saying like, oh, because I am a specific type of person, my rates get better or summon at midnight because that's better. That's actually legit misleading in terms of talking about a card. I don't see that as misleading. That's just something like 
Dokkan is so easy that you could beat it with just about any game. Like, Zahal gets a lot of shit for this because he says that Super Battle Road isn't actually that hard. And I feel like it's specifically because that's the way he plays specifically with, like, the units that he decides to do. But then everyone else has this, like, different experience of, like, now Super Battle Road is super hard for me. And then for one person, it's not. So then everyone, they, the common mindset is that Super Battle Road is super tough. So then it becomes, right. someone says something that's not the same, that has a different, like, actual experience with it. And then they all go down his throat and say, like, no, you're wrong, because this is the exact established day way that we've understood the way we've done this. And I feel like that's something that has somehow maybe gotten out of control in Dokkan, is that everyone has become slaves to calculations. Yeah, so the the calculus community is like first started out because people were like, wow, we know the internal workings of this game and we can put together like an informative thing. And now it has spiraled to such a degree where like you can't blanket apply like because of the way the teams work in this game. On a, like a constant state. You always have to have a six specific team members. You pick which links you want to be active and which ones you don't. Blah, 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 blah. You count them out that way. You're looking at that and saying, I believe that this list possible like combination of these factors. Therefore, it is undisputably factually correct, which is just not. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it was interesting that I saw on Twitter when Mai was talking about it, and he said, actually, acting like these things are fact and, like, tier rankings, and that's really not the case. Um, it's based on damage per turn. So people are looking at it like it's a, a de facto, like, we're ranking them based on their viability, and it's not. It's meant only to show damage per turn, which is not feasible function on damage per turn in the modern game. Mm. It's it's not so much that like survive I don't, I don't know but like shit will fuck you up <laughs> nowadays, right? Yeah. There's a lot of content that will kick the shit out of you if you don't care about anything and you just try to blow it up before it blows you up. Like yeah, it's, it's not that sustainable anymore. No, that style of play is kind of uh definitely fallen off the wayside where now I, defense is more important whereas the previous uh, Dokkan defense was never an important thing. Right, because you killed entire bosses in one hit. And yeah, like at the very top level, you could probably still just fucking do that. Because I'm sure Rainbow Super Saiyan 4 Goku is going to kill everything. Mm -hmm. Fucking whatever. But like, you can't take a very subjective set of factors. You like them the most, that makes them objective factors. And then go around and like, I saw some dude on Twitter the other day say, oh, so you think that your field experience trumps the calculations? Oh, it's like, yes! Yeah, that's... Experience trumps theory craft. It does. Always it does, in anything. It, yeah, the, it really the, does. Uh, the Vegeta in Legends that everyone was like, that's fucking busted. The Rage Vegeta. Yeah, on paper, he looked really good. Are fucking ridiculous. And the immediate response was, this is one of the best characters in the game. And he came out, and he was a wet fart. Big ol' wet that fart. man for two and a half days, and they were like, this boy sucks. And we're never playing him again. So yes, of course practical experience is more important than calculations. Just, like, I think they're fine when a unit's coming out, and you're like, well, how, you know, see if maybe we should bother to go for him or not, or whatever. But, like, when you're talking about a tier list, there's too much, like, subjectivity into what matters to each individual person. To look at their damage calcs and be like, well, there you go. That's all you need. That's the facts. Yeah. Here. It's I just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And this is why we kind of get into the situation of, like, when someone, I don't know. Again, this entire situation has just been, and the thing that actually sucks is, again, this is someone going to my as someone who's actually, like, going around the thing that's like the that's been a big problem is that now that there are actual people on the reddit which is something that a lot of people forget because the reddit when it's uh shittiest is when you notice it more but there are people on the reddit that are also just trying to be civil people and then all that gets yeah, ruined play the game yeah that play the game but all that gets ruined because then all that's left is a bunch of assholes that just want to scream at each other so then they get reported because it's like hey can you deal with this because this is like 
not good. We're trying this to is, be like a community, and we're too busy just like you know. These two people are throwing off the other side, trying yeah. to complain about something that doesn't matter. Both sides are like complaining about something that so doesn't matter, and then the mods have to go in and clean up that mess. And then Mai's like, "Oh, that this really kind of sucks because this is really influenced. Like, this is the same reason I had a problem with not with laughing what Matt Laughing Man did, but the fact that it was the blowback that was right afterwards, which was a buttload of people like literally coming to the Reddit and then causing a buttload of shit that we just weren't interested in." And uh, I'll also say that when Laughing Man did what he did, he didn't tell anyone that he was going to do it. He just decided to do it. So it oh, every time he did it, it caused a huge amount of shit on the Reddit. And it was always like a pain in my ass because I had to look at all of it and then go like, oh, god damn it. I have to ban so many people because they're act they can't act like actual people. And there's like threats going around and people are throwing shit and they're saying the mods are in on this too. This Obviously, you could have stopped it. A fix is in. The fix is in is what they're yelling at me. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> That's my yeah, phrase. So and I'm from this is that nothing in your life. You are who is listening to this yeah. until the day you die. Will be less important. To top tier units in Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle. You have never in your life seen something that matters less than this. So letting it constantly get to this point of like, Everyone's ready to fucking throw hands, and the Reddit looks like idiots, and Twitter looks like idiots, and they're all clowning each other, but they all, in the fact of thinking that they've beaten the other side, this is because they're being smug over something that doesn't matter ever. No. Rebalance your priorities, everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Which is another reason why I've, again, this is also be the last question we'll ever take from this, because I've really, just to show you, like, how much I don't want to talk about this, this is just something I don't want to ever be involved with, and the only reason I let this one go by is because I feel we've always done a pretty good job of not trying to hide any of our weird stuff, like, when Griever fucking took over the Reddit, we were immediately shitting on him. Yeah. Oh, well, he didn't take over the Reddit, he took down the Reddit. He tried to. He tried to. Uh, amazingly tried to take shit down and i feel like this is the one time you'll ever get to hear us talk about this so again don't really ask questions and if you're gonna if you're gonna make comments about this maybe don't fight each other over stupid shit <laughs> fight over yeah, just, god no no one looks dumber than people getting haughty and uppity over something this irrelevant no like you you can feel like a smug sense of self satisfaction but everyone looking at you thinks you look stupid so yeah and again this is something from like and it's also been weird because again i do we've had lolagami uh, uh up on modcast we've done a bunch of like he was there in the valley party we've done a lot of stuff with him to truth is of course someone who has uh definitely helped a lot for me specifically so when it's like a situation like this where it's like literally two people you know it's like i don't really want to it's 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 it just it's just a shitty thing. What I'm saying is that this should never have gotten as bad as it did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's dumb. Uh, both sides need to rethink their priorities in life and find some things that actually matter to fight about. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Way across the world. All right. Uh, what I'm saying is make some signs. Yes, <laughs> and maybe give peace <laughs> a chance is what I'm saying. <laughs> Things don't need to be this way. We can all just go back to shitting on what actually matters in Dokkan, which is shitting on the devs. Yeah, you know, I feel like every time something like this happens, Akatsuki's like, whew, we got a week of, of peace. Yeah, we got Friends a week again for another seven days. Then they won't have to matter when uh, Japan gets both LR Broly and LR uh, Gohan and Goten on the same banner. At the same time, it's and totally going to happen. It's totally going to happen, and then everyone in the global will go, uh -huh, what? Okay, it's not going to be the same banner, though. It's going to be... It's going to be... Goten and Trunks, or Goten and Gohan are going to come out, and then another banner is going to come out with the new Broly that goes with them, just like Khalifa and Kale. A hundred percent. It'd be funny if Global did not get Broly quickly. Or actually, it was the inverse. I'm still waiting to see. I'm really, I really do think that the new LR Broly is going to be the one from Super, because that's the only Broly that they have left. But I also think that they should burn down Dokkan and make it Bio Broly. <laughs> I would love that. I would be all in on Bio Broly. I actually don't hate that movie. I think that's. I think there's a lot of dumps. I think I just don't like the idea of Bio Broly. <laughs> 
It's not a good movie, but it has a lot of good moments for characters that do not get a lot of shine otherwise. It's a very strange movie because like uh, Goten, Trunks, and Krillin are kind of the main characters, and then so is Android 18. 18. Yeah. There's no Vegeta like fucking around and showing up and fucking shit up or Piccolo or Goku. It's no. Goten, Trunks, Krillin, and 18, and that's awesome to me, even if the content of the movie sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Who and is then, around is still cool. Also, that it takes place during the Majin Buu rampage. Yeah, they're just doing this just because some shit's going on. And they beat him by splashing him with ocean water. It's perfect. It's the perfect ending, really. Yeah, well, because, like, it's dumb. But it has a lot of cool stuff that, like, affect because of how dumb the rest of it is. Yeah, it's true. Uh, all right, then. Let's... This ended up being much longer than I thought it would be, but here we yeah, are. We'll, we'll save the full Bio Broly review for our concession stand return on the Broly series. Oh, my God. If you actually want to do a concession stand return where we just talk about all the Dragon Ball movies and just get ready. I feel like every single Dragon Ball movie would be its own episode because we would just be unable to say anything else about... <laughs> Like it I would... will totally do one. We'll do a part one, Broly one and two, and then a part two of Bio Broly and Dragon Ball Super Broly. All right, fine. Get looking for that for right now. Uh, let me find the outro now for uh, to be released. As remembered, we have a new outro. Right, we have one of those. Yes, we do. I also want to say that uh, since I don't want to constantly put in. Um, that's no good from Sonic at the end of this. You should say after I'm done, that's no good. All right, hang on. I got to get my real shitty uh, inflection in my head so I can say it the way he says it. Okay. And it, you'll, you say it right after I say before you die. Okay. All right. Wait, wait. Um, okay. No, we're going to go. So we'll yeah, just go. after I say before you die, that's when that's your cue. Ready? Okay. 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 Kid. Okay. Okay, kids, don't be afraid to say no to Dokkan. Anyone who asks you to you to play Dokkan is not your friend. Dokkan can and will kill. Remember, don't be afraid to turn to your priest, your rabbi, your minister, your moms, your dads, your teachers, because Dokkan can kill. And if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's no good. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>